In this video, we're going to look at how you can use Jenkins, which is a CI-CD platform, with Postman to run pipelines and see results straight from the Postman UI. So to start, I'm in a workspace called Insurance APIs, and I've got an API set up. Inside this API, I have a definition file, and I also have a collection that is associated with my API. So how you do this is you go down to collections and you click this plus button. So you have a few options here. You can copy an existing collection that's already inside your workspace. You could generate your collection from your definition file in your API, or you could go ahead and add a new collection from scratch. Once you have that set up, you can go over to your test and automations tab. Um, I've already written some tests inside my collection and I've gone ahead and run it once just so they know that everything is passing. This is a good practice to do just so you know that you're in a good place to run your collection from your pipeline before you go through the steps of setting it up. Next, let's head over to Jenkins to do some setup work before we click this Jenkins button and connect everything together. So from our Jenkins dashboard, we'll go to new item, fill in a name, I'll name mine Claims API to correspond with the collection I'll be running. I'm going to choose a pipeline project and click OK. For now, we're going to leave all of this blank. Postman will eventually generate some code for us that we'll paste into the script here. So I'll save, and now we've got our blank project. We're also going to need an authorization token from Jenkins to be able to connect our Postman account. So from the top bar, if you click on your user, go to configure and scroll down to this API token section. Um, here you're able to add a new token, name it and generate it. If you've already got one generated like I do, you can go ahead and use that. So once you have your token, jot it down for later. And you'll also want to note your um, Jenkins instance URL. We're going to use this to connect to our Postman account. Now let's head back over to Postman to connect everything together. From our testing screen, we can click on the Jenkins button and start filling in all the fields to connect Jenkins to Postman. I'll name this again, Claims API. We'll put in our server URL that we just copied over, enter your Jenkins username, and then your authentication token that we did in the last step. Once you enter your authentication token, your project should have loaded and you can search to find the project we just created. We'll click connect. And now it's giving us the option to configure the Postman CLI. So let's go ahead and do that. So you may be wondering about this term, the Postman CLI. If you've been a long time Postman user, you might be familiar with Newman, which is our open source command line runner. The Postman CLI is a new offering from Postman that came out with the version 10 release around September of 2022. This is a completely different offering that lives alongside Newman. Where Newman is open source, the Postman CLI is closed source and owned and maintained by Postman. Uh, so one of the main features is that it allows you to send your run results back to the Postman UI so that your whole team can view the run results that might have previously been siloed to the developer who was running it. If you're interested in learning more about the Postman CLI, you can click this button. Um, this will take you to our Learning Center documentation where we have instructions on how to download the CLI as well as just more information around it in general. So working our way down the page, first we'll want to choose the collections that we want to run. We're going to stick with this collection that's associated with our API and I'm going to uh, select the environment that we want to use. If you don't need an environment for your test, you can leave this blank. Next up, you'll see this governance and security section. If you're on a Postman Enterprise plan, this will allow you to check your governance and security rule violations inside your CI CD pipeline. I'm going to uncheck this for now. Um, further down, we have our CI CD configuration. Here you can choose your operating system. I'm going to stick with Linux, but choose whatever works for you. And then we have some generated Jenkins pipeline code, which we'll go over um, in more detail once we get into Jenkins. 
You will see that you need this Postman API key variable inside your Jenkins pipeline. And so I wanted to point out that you can generate an API key right from this message below the code pane. So if you click on this, you can enter a name for your Postman API key, generate it and jot it down for later. Or if you already have a Postman API key that you wanna use, that's totally fine as well. Now that we've got our API key, let's copy the Postman CLI command head back into Jenkins and find the project we set up earlier. We'll go into configure and scroll all the way down and paste in the code that Postman generated for us. We'll make this a little bigger and now let's walk through this um, line by line to see what's going on. This first section is uh, telling Jenkins what agent we want the pipeline to run on. The default is agent any. I'm going to replace this with one that works a little bit better for my setup, but just make sure to use the agent that works for you. This next section is looking at the tools that Jenkins needs to auto install and put on the path. You can see we've got Node.js here, and then whatever your Node.js configured tool name is, is what you'll need to write in here. I've already got this configured in my uh, global installation, and the installation is just the Node.js version name, so make sure to check uh, what that is on your instance. And then further down, we've got this first stage where we're installing the Postman CLI. We don't need to do anything with this stage. Next is logging into the Postman CLI, where you can see we're using the Postman API key we just generated. We'll come back to this in a second and look at how to plug that in. And then finally, we're running the collection. So Postman collection run, and then we've got the Postman um, collection ID of the collection that we want to run. So what this is doing is it's pulling the live version of the collection from our workspace. So any changes that are made in the workspace will be reflected in this pipeline. Um, if you had maybe a Git repository hooked up to your Jenkins pipeline, you could reference your collection file uh, with the path and that would be a more static version, wouldn't reflect the live changes. So just good to know that that's an option. We're doing the same thing with the environment here, since we told uh, Postman in our configuration that we wanted to use an environment file. We've got the environment ID right here. And then lastly, we've got this integration ID. This number is unique to your integration setup. And then this job name and build number will be filled in by Jenkins when the pipeline is run. So we don't need to do anything here. So let's go back to the previous step where we were talking about using our Postman API key. I'm gonna walk through one way of storing credentials and referencing them, but make sure you're using your organization's best practices for storing and referencing credentials. I'm sure there are a couple ways to do it. I'm gonna copy this Postman API key to have for reference later, um, but let's open another window of Jenkins. Go into our user and down to credentials. Um, down at the bottom, you can choose whichever store you want to store your credentials in. I'm going to go into this global, and you can click on Add Credentials. Secret text type works well for storing API keys. So here you could specify your scope, paste your API key into the secret field, and then fill in an ID and description that will help you identify this API key later. We'll go back into our Jenkins configuration and click on this pipeline syntax, which will take us to a page that helps us generate some code snippets. So I'm going to scroll down to with credentials, which is going to bind credentials to variables. We'll add a binding um, and clicking secret text will bring up all of our secret text variables. Um, if we paste in the Postman API key, uh, which is from the generated code, I'm gonna choose my insurance API key and generate the pipeline script. So this will tell Jenkins we want to bind the credentials ID of, in my case, PM insurance API key with the variable that Postman gave us and the one that they're gonna use, which is Postman API key. So I'm gonna copy this line, go back into our configuration and paste this, format it a little bit and then add a closing bracket and we'll click save. And now we should be able to build our pipeline and eventually click into the build. 
we go into the console output and scroll down to the results. You can see we've got a summary here of um, which requests and tests were executed, how many failed. It looks like all of ours are passing. Um, then it'll give us this link to go back into our results in the Postman UI. So let's click into this. And we can see what looks like a collection runner output. So you can see um, which of your tests passed and failed and were skipped. Let's go back into our claims API, into the test and automation section. And now we'll expand one of these builds. And if we expand it all the way, we can again see kind of that same information from our console output, see our iterations, requests, pre-request scripts, et cetera. Um, and now all of our teammates can come into this workspace see the status of the Jenkins build all while staying inside of Postman.